Day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, a message from Yonko Galat. As the work on the 40th anniversary video is wrapping up, we would like to say thank you to all those who have made submissions. A portion of the video will also feature photos from Faith and Grace events 
that have been collected over the years. We would like to take this opportunity to ask anyone who does not want to appear in the video to please let us know. You can do so by notifying Yanko Galat and he will make sure not to include any videos or any photographs that you are in. Some announcements. Pastor wanted me to remind the youth and parents that there's a youth confirmation class beginning this Saturday, November the 6th at 10 a.m. We also want to be reminded that there is a voters meeting uh, which will be held here at Faith next Sunday, November the 7th after service. And uh, there will be a, a break between the service and the voters meeting, 15 or 20 minutes or so, just to allow you to go to your car if you wish, or nip over to Tim Hortons and get something to eat. Um, <coughs> This voters meeting will focus only on reports, so we'll keep it simple that way. Um, the following voters meeting, which will be in December, will focus on nominations uh, for various positions in the church, as well as uh, our budget. And so there are nomination forms here at, the, um, at this exit or entrance on the right hand side of the table and then there are uh, descriptions of the various positions either at the back of the church here or on the table um, coming in uh, this entrance here um, and then on the nomination form it does list those positions that will need to be filled on Monday evening tomorrow uh, at 7 p.m. there will be an elders meeting and then pastor did want me to remind you all that next Sunday daylight savings time ends so we're going to go back to normal uh, time next Sunday morning so you'll have a chance to sleep in uh, another hour I guess if you'd like and finally, um, the Church Council has formed a committee uh, that will include members from both Faith and Grace. And we're looking for volunteers to serve in that committee beyond just the council members. And um, the task, in part, will be to look at ways of utilizing our, our properties, if you like, at both locations in order to increase cash flow. And we had a little bump in the road, as you remember, this uh, this past summer. So we're looking at trying to overcome that uh, by getting together and talking about it and seeing if we can come up with some some ideas to smooth, if you like, the the cash flow. So those are the announcements, and uh, hopefully Pastor Castillo will be back with us momentarily. We have a few children downstairs for Sunday school, uh, but we can begin with the. Uh, with our opening hymn, Blessed Jesus at Your Word, hymn number 904.
again in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. With humble hearts, let us approach our Father's throne of grace. Let us kneel to reflect on our sins and our need for the Savior. Together we pray, Gracious Father, because our entire lives are to be ones of repentance, we bow before you and confess our sins. We have turned away from the truth of your word, choosing to go our own way, by what we have thought, by what we have done, and by what we have failed to do. We have broken your commands and are deserving of your wrath and punishment. By the mercy of Christ, your Son, set us free from our captivity. Enable us by your Holy Spirit to live under you in your kingdom and to serve you in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Amen. Just as Christ is risen from the dead, he lives and reigns to all eternity. It is most certainly true that he died and rose again for you to make you right <clears throat> with God, to adopt you as children of the Heavenly Father, and to set you free from sin and death. As a called and ordained servant of the world, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if the Son sets you free, you will, will be, be free indeed. indeed. Please rise, and we continue with the entry. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
we do it responsibly. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies. And through the abiding word of your Son, set us free from our sin, that we may know your saving grace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading this morning is from Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 7. And the gospel is eternal and must be proclaimed everywhere. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak responsibly in the sun. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. God is a refuge and a strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms all totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariot with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The epistle lesson this morning is from Romans chapter 3, verses 19 to 28. And we hear that the righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. 
then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith, apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah! Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah! The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And this reading will be the text for our sermon. Please rise. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our Christian faith as speaking the Apostle Creed. I, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our sermon hymn. Thank you. 
brothers and sisters in Christ. Our text for the Reformation Day is from the Gospel of John, chapter 8. We'll focus on the word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. It is indeed appropriate that we have these words for our text on this <coughs> Reformation Sunday. This is the day where we as a church celebrate and remember the gift of God's Word and the Gospel of Jesus Christ for, for lost sinners. It is a day about freedom. Freedom from sin, freedom from death, freedom from the shackles that binds us all. This freedom, which we call justification, is what defines us and makes us Lutherans. No doubt, it is this very freedom in the gospel that makes us Christians. What does God's word provide to those who are held in bondage? What does it provide to those who are not in control of their destiny and their future? These, of course, are not new questions. In our text, the Jews were a bit unclear about the questions of bondage and freedom. Jesus tells them that only the truth of the Word of God can free them. What is their response? We are sons of Abraham and have never been in bondage to anyone. They thought that Jesus was talking about physical slavery, but they missed his point. What Jesus is talking about is not about who is your boss, or even whether you are in prison or free. You see, according to Holy Scriptures, we are all enslaved. We are enslaved to sin, to death and to the power of the devil. We may not know it, like the Jews in our text. We, we go through life acting like we are in control, but this is not true. All it takes is a lost temper, one too many temptations, or some other sins to get you realize that you are not in control of your own life. You may put up a good fight sometimes, but ultimately we are enslaved to sin and death. The Apostle Paul talks about this at length in his great chapter of Sin and Grace, Romans chapter 3. Hear what he says. Now we know that whatever the law says it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. In other words, God's law in His Word serves to show us what we really are, sinful people. We cannot accomplish the written law, no matter how much we try. We all learn to make excuses before God for our sin. We find thousands of reasons why the law should not apply to us, but it does. God's law rings out into the whole world and it convicts us of our sinfulness and need for Jesus and his righteousness. 
that crushing weight of the law is necessary, absolutely necessary for our salvation and freedom. In order for us to seek the healing arms of Jesus, we have to know that we are sick. More than that, you have to know that you are dead in trespasses and sins, and that only God's mercy can save us. And God does show mercy to us. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die so that your sins might be forgiven. That is the truth that will set you free. Jesus said, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. That is the power of God's word, my friends in Christ. When he says, you are free, I forgive you, I baptize you, this is my body and blood. When Christ our Lord says these great gospel words to you, it is reality. This is the truth that sets you free. That's what makes you a Lutheran. We hold on to that doctrine of justification for everything. That's what defines us as the people of God. When we forget that, we have forgotten our very identity. As I said last Sunday, in the month of November, we celebrate our 40th anniversary. This will be a month where we will look back to see what God has done for us. We will examine ourselves to see where we are. And we look to the future to see what great things God has in store for us. In these turbulent times, it is critical that we as church be grounded in the truth of the gospel. That's what we are about. That's who we are. We teach this gospel in Bible class, confirmation, Sunday school. We teach this gospel in meetings and even in casual conversation here at church. This is the one unifying factor to this place. We live in one of the hardest ages to be a faithful Christian. We live in a time when it would be easy, it would be so very tempting to hide the gospel under a bushel and just make ourselves into one more social agency or club. But it cannot be so. This truth of God's word is too important. This is the word that creates faith. This is the word that brings eternal life. We must talk and pray and struggle and argue and pray some more that Christ our Lord will give us the guidance to hold up his word of truth to a dying world. That is our mission as the Christian church. There was another time in the church history but they had to ask some of these very hard questions. In the 16th century, 500 years ago, the church in Europe had largely forgotten its purpose. The church had gone from the place of salvation to a place of law and fear. God's people did not go to church to have their sins forgiven. They went to church to fulfill an obligation, or out of habit, or even out of fear. In the midst of that chaos, Christ our Lord raised up men like Martin Luther, Philip Melanchthon, and other reformers. The Word of God had such an impact on these men and many others that they were willing to suffer everything, even death, to hold up that gospel of Jesus Christ and teach it to their children. These are our forebearers, my friends. 
they sacrificed much so that you and I could stand before God today in a Lutheran church and know that we would hear the good news of Jesus Christ. This is what the Reformation is all about. This is what Christendom is all about. Always has been and always will be. All the focus is on Christ and the good news of our salvation. It is about his all atoning sacrifice. All the focus is on the Heavenly Father and his unconditional and merited free gift of grace which he bestows upon us, not because of our works, but because of Christ alone. This all seems so simple, and it is. And yet, it was so revolutionary in Luther's time. Even worse, it is still revolutionary in our time too. Many will say that they are saved through faith, alone in grace, alone because of Christ alone. But then in the next breath say, and now here is what you need to do. Salvation for so many Christ-loving Christians remains a question mark. Am I saved? Am I good enough? Have I done enough? Have I done too much? They love Christ, and yet they ignore the cross and seek their own words, where they will only find uncertainty or false assurance. It is to this darkness and fear and uncertainty and false words righteous assurance that our Lord's heavenly messengers still proclaims, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and the springs of water brothers and sisters in christ you know the truth and that truth has set you free may that truth be revealed through you may this light of christ this light of your justification in Christ and because of Christ shine forth in your heart and soul like the noonday sun. May it shine forth in you and through you in all that you say and do in your daily worship. In terms of reformation, may you be that heaven sent messenger of justifying gospel to every tribe and nation and person that, you, that your Lord brings you into contact within your daily comings and goings, always pointing to and glorifying Christ. Faith alone, in God's grace alone, because of Christ alone. That's what it is all about. That's reason to rejoice. So this Reformation Sunday, rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. God's word still reigns supreme, and he gives you the word of his gospel in so many ways in this holy place. That is the greatest blessing from God. You are free indeed. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We pray. Now unto the one holy, blessed, and undivided Trinity, be all dominion, glory, and power. Amen. We continue with our offering hymn.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, you have freed us from the captivity to sin and death, from the delusion of trying to earn and maintain our own righteousness, and from the chains of condemnation and fear. That is why we rejoice in your word. If the Son sets you free, you, you will, will be, be free, free indeed. indeed. Lord Jesus, only your mercy and grace enable us to know, find, and live in the freedom of your eternal gospel. Send your spirit upon your church that we continue in the truth of the Reformation and that to all the people of the world we proclaim this truth. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Lord Jesus, free us from self-centeredness and pride. Turn our focus toward you first in faith and then toward others in love. Bless all who serve you and others in their homes, in the church, in the workplace, and in our community to rejoice in knowing that if the Son sets you free, you, you will be free indeed. indeed. Lord Jesus, you proclaim freedom for the captives and recovery for those with infirmities. Grant you healing in both soul and body to those we name before you, especially Walter and Donna, for Linda, for Patricia, for Annette, who is the wife of Pastor Warren, for Sandra, for Stacy and sons, for Ridva and family, for Sarah, for Alice, for Rainer, for Bill and Vicky, for Marsha, for Shirley, for Jenna and, and, and her family, for Sarah, for Susan, for Shirley, for Bill and Sandy, for Mircha, for Melissa, for Michelle, for Peter, for Ed, for Judy, for Marianne, for Cheryl, for Al, for Sue, for Mike and Ann, for Becky, for Anna, for Doreen, for Dolores, for Grace, for Nancy, for Frank, for Harry, and for Delbert. Also, we pray for those we name in our hearts and minds. Rejoicing in your healing touch, grant that all who receive your good news boldly say, if the Son sets you free, you, you will, will be, be free, free indeed. indeed. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the members of our family of faith. We pray that you would keep us in your care, providing for all our earthly needs. Grant to Bill and Sandra, Andrew, Laura, Helen, and Ian, Brad, Ray, Clay, Gwen, Quinn, Brian, Laura, Amanda, Nelson, and Yuri, that they all dwell together in peace under the protection of your holy angels, sharing eternally in your blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, our times are in your hands. Look with favor upon Susan, Jim, Jana, Emily, Hope, Colin, Jennifer, Ian, Jetrick, and Sandra, as they celebrate their birthdays this week. Grant that they continue to grow in wisdom and grace, strengthen their trust in your goodness, and bless them with your abiding love all the days of their life. Lord, your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for another year of merry life given to John and Jill. Open their hearts to receive more of your love that their love for each other may never grow weary, but deepen and grow through every joy and sorrow shared. Lord, your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you have given the church the twofold missions of discipleship and outreach. Help faith and grace to accomplish this task with your help. Help us to dedicate our lives to both goals that we might continually grow in our knowledge trust and love for you, and that we continue forgiving each other when we fail. 
and that we might share this faith with those around us. Let the world know we are yours by our love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, for this and for all other concerns we have, please hear and answer our prayers according to your gracious will. That, that we, we live, live each day, day in the, in the freedom, freedom we have come to know. know. Amen. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, If you abide in my word, you will be my disciples. And you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Well, we have concluded our worship service this morning. Thanks for coming. Uh, have a good day. Go out and serve the Lord. God bless you. Good to see you. Just out through that door. I'll be right with you. You leave your jacket. I'll look after it. Yeah. We'll just pull around this way. <laughs> 